Now talking of AI itself, AI again, uh, there are two different, uh, distinct different, uh, uh, you can say areas where AI manifests itself. One is the general AI, artificial general intelligence, and all these LLMs and all are all in the area of general AI, general, uh, you know, explosion of intelligence, which is taking place. The other is the narrow AI. So in the military context, if you look at, so far we've been focusing on uh, narrow AI applications, like for example, collation of intelligence. This is one of the main areas where we've been focusing so far, but there are many other narrow AI areas such as target recognition, yeah. and autonomous weapon systems where autonomy is there in weapon systems. Today, we are seeing these, the drones which we see, including in the Ukraine conflict, they are largely, in fact, I would say almost 100% piloted drones. While there are AI components in those piloted drones, but primarily, uh, essentially, they are all piloted drones. And it is piloted drones which require communications uh, uh, for controlling them. And that is how the EW systems, if you look at the Ukraine conflict, the EW systems have been extremely effective against uh, drones because you require firstly the GPS uh, location systems, which again is dependent on the electromagnetic spectrum and the communication with the operator who's piloting those drones. But imagine if these very systems which are now at play, we've seen a little bit of it and what has been happening in the Ukraine war become autonomous then these communications, the EW the effectiveness against these will completely go and a different realm of uh, counter US will come in. Some of it is getting developed and I'm now referring to the directed energy weapons and primary and, and these are the laser weapons. So uh, India too has been making some headway recently in the reports you would have seen a 30 kilowatt uh, laser system has been tried out. but. In the world, uh, really speaking, uh, in the global, the, the leaders who are there have gone on much further. The Israeli RN, uh, RN beam, so to say, and US systems, others, even Chinese, have gone on to 100 kilowatt systems and beyond. So this is one area which has to be focused. Directed energy weapons is one area which is also an area of focus. Now, coming back to AI, I was talking of the AGI part. So, so far, we've been uh, focusing on the narrow AI part, where again, uh, uh, I, I mean, it, our sites have to be much more, the resources devoted to we have to be much greater than what has been devoted so far. On the AGI front, where it is going to, we keep talking of this UDA loop and AI is going to, you know, uh, speed up the UDA loop. In actual terms, it translates to taking tactical, operational and even strategic decisions. We can even say decisions of support but ultimately, you, there might, I, I'm actually convinced I'm of the view that there'll be a time when the decisions taken uh, by the AI systems will be superior to those taken by, by, by humans, no matter what experience you may have. I mean, that's the era in which we are moving and it's going to come very fast. But let me get not get into that. Let me just say that in the realm of decision making and many other artificial general intelligence applications, we have to have captive uh, AGI ecosystem. I would put it that way. So when General Shukla was saying that where are our own LLMs? No, it's not just Indian LLMs. We have to have captive defense LLMs. And the GPUs, we've in fact given recommendations on that, that we don't have, we have, we have not been giving adequate thought because it's very difficult to follow the speed with which the revolution is taking place. I mean, we talk of the chat GPT was just about three years back, it came up and now deep seek has come up and we say, okay, so many GPUs, chat GPT use so many and, uh, you know, the deep seek used only about 2000 odd GPUs. But you look at Elon Musk's Grok system, which has been trained on two lakh GPUs. And the GPUs which are being absorbed by China, primary adversary, which should be, you know, I mean, we should be looking at basic primary data at China. It has already got a million plus, uh, yeah, a million plus GPUs all told within it. It's already acquired these over, over the years. Yeah, and, and it is going to acquire it, it's developing its own, but of course it's way behind uh, the US as far as development is concerned. So we have to be acquiring as a country. Certain things have to be done as a nation and then 
captive to the defense because of security considerations and the way our systems function, you have to have captive elements. So this is one area of focus which uh, we already recommended. Hopefully, actions will be taken. Uh, you know, realization, like I said, is dawning. Uh, it's all a question of now following up and with what force we follow all these up. I want to say that there are four prongs uh, to create this AI ecosystem, especially for this artificial general intelligence, uh, which explosion is taking place uh, in the commercial domain. So the question which I phrase is that uh, uh, in a military audience or something where, where I might be speaking, I say that are we convinced you know, the, the leaders in AI today, tech, uh, the, who are on the top, let's say the CEO of OpenAI, Meta, Grok, etc., etc., almost across the board, they are convinced that in a matter of a few years, less than a decade, let me put it that way, some say it much faster, the collect AI intelligence will exceed collective human intelligence. That is the conviction which they have. Now, of course, since it is in the future, there are certain hurdles to be crossed. But the way uh, the, 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 the improvement in AI technologies take place, all the scaling laws, etc., etc., is a very complicated sort of an affair. But I'm just saying that ultimately they have this conviction. Now, if we ask it today in a in our own military audience or in any military audience, I would say even including the US because uh, you know General Shana and also we have been discussing. So the same mindset is there uh, in in other places also. If you ask this question, the military mind would not accept this that AI is going to you know this uh, this uh, commander's uh, 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 the experience etc counts, but That's it is felt that all these commanders experience the machine intelligence is likely to exceed all that. So this is only one realm, but all I'm saying is it's going to increase uh, the, the way in which it is proceeding. Uh, society would not know what has hit them. Uh, and the same, same thing applies to the military forces also. So there are four prongs which have to be worked on. One is, of course, the compute part, the GPUs and all, the compute part. The second is data, which again General Shukla mentioned. That data is data, how we manage this entire data. And we have to make use of uh, open domain data also for military purposes. And we have to make use of uh, manage our own military data. Uh, so there's a huge amount of effort which has to be made. So second is data. The third, of course, I've already mentioned is expertise. And the fourth is power. Now, power is a major component uh, for all this AI transformation in the world, which is taking place. But the power as an energy. Uh, energy, yeah. Right. Gigawatts of power, you know, a lot, a lot of power is getting consumed. Although in the military context, the type of thing which we are talking about, at least in the near term or midterm, power should not be too much of a concern as far as India is concerned, uh, the, the quantum which is required. But the other three prongs have to be really worked on. Our sites have yeah. been very low. All of them have to be, uh, uh, you know, exploited and leveraged and put together as an ecosystem for it yeah. to outflow. And then, of course, ultimately all this, uh, the use cases, how are, how are you going to utilize this uh, military, uh, the exactly. intelligence in the military domain? So same thing, the innovation, this technology is there, but how will it play out in the military domain is where we have to think. And war yeah. fighters and technologies have to come together to make this happen. No, absolutely, so, sir. I, uh, I, I, I think General Shukla has read that paper. I just published a paper on this, that the three missing pieces in our India's AI puzzle are practically the things that you've mentioned, the data piece, the talent piece, and I mentioned the R&D piece, which of course we've discussed already at great length in terms of the innovation that's required. And unless that combined with the compute, uh, combines with the compute focus that we've had under the National AI mission, we're not gonna have all the building blocks that we need to build the right applications and use cases ultimately, whether on the military side or the civilian side.